Well, my fellow Americans, we all know that whenever there's a serious national crisis, the first phone call that the president makes is, where are the celebrities? <laughs> if you want some sort of advice on how to raise your children in a moral and decent and upright, intelligent, disciplined fashion, the first person you go to, of course, is an actor. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Ott talking about Meryl Streep's uh, gigantic anti-Trump tantrum, but on a much larger issue about the war that celebrities are currently in with the American people. Uh, Steve, let's start with you. Um, I think Meryl Streep gave the whole thing away in her opening statement when she basically said, well, here we are, the most despised people in America, uh, Hollywood, foreigners, and the press, because the Golden Globes is the, is the foreign press. Yeah. I don't think these people are used to being despised. I think they're used to being adored. And I think that the idea that the country hates them because she knew it, she knew it getting up, has really made them quite unhinged. I don't know if it'll make them unhinged enough, do you think, to, to be quiet and just do their jobs, Steve? Or do you think that this is going to be a series of meltdowns that we're going to see for the next four or eight years? I don't know. I don't know for a fact that we actually hate them. I I, I don't. I enjoy a good movie. I enjoy a, uh, a well-done TV series or, or miniseries or whatever. And I, I, I don't think about the actors that much any more than I think about... Uh, uh, what a idiot Sting is whenever I put on an old uh, Police album. Uh, but I do know that they hate us. Uh, the, the, right. key, the key to that is Meryl Streep saying, well, you know, if it weren't for us, all you'd have left are, uh, uh, what was it, mixed martial arts and, and what and was football. the other thing? Yeah, football. You'd have MMA and football. Well, you know what? Those are the things we like to watch when we're not watching your entitled asses. <laughs> this is all entertainment to us. It's all, it's all supposed to be a good fun. And I don't see a whole lot of football players who, who despise me so much. They're, I could name one or two. I uh, name one. Yeah, one. Yeah. I, I can't think of a single <laughs> MMA fighter who, who disdains uh, the heartland of this country because he probably came from here and he probably still fights here the way that Meryl Streep showed that he does. And let's be clear, these are just terrible people. These are people for whom Caligula is a heartwarming coming-of-age story. Their only problem with that movie is the horse didn't have to sleep with anybody to get in the Senate. Uh, it's just, 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 just the worst. And we don't hate them. We expect them to be depraved because that's what entertainers have always been. So, you know what? Make a nice movie, win your nice award, and as Scott said, uh, that uh, Oscars, God, this has got to be 40 years ago, just say thank you and sit down. Scott, as a former journalist, I know you must have been moved nearly to tears when Meryl Streep called for a vigilant press that will aggressively pursue all manners of presidential misconduct in order to protect, protect leftist values. That's what we need, isn't it, Scotty? We need a, a vibrant leftist press, which we don't have today. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm going to lose it. It's not even my question, and I'm going to yeah. lose it. Ah, that's it. If only we had a, if only there was a press that would protect <sighs> left-wing interests in this country. Well, and we certainly do need a vigilant press, and I don't think she was suggesting that we needed to protect left-wing interests. We needed to protect American values, not to be confused it's the same thing with, to it, with your slur yeah. of left-wing interests. So, but the problem with having a vigilant press is that there's no longer any farm team because for the last eight years, anybody who wanted to do that kind of work couldn't get a job. And so now we're calling upon the press to be vigilant now that our guy's on the outs. Um, and I think, you know, it's a little too little too late uh, for Mrs. Streep. But I think that, you know, let me let me just say the one thing I know that's good about Meryl Streep, by the way. I think she's been married since like 1978, which I think is a new Hollywood record. <laughs> and okay. she's she's married to a sculptor. And so that's great. But what I think people like Meryl Streep don't understand, and maybe guys like Vince Vaughn do, if you've seen that great picture of Vince Vaughn just sort of staring at her <laughs> as she did this. Um, He's shell-shocked. Yeah. I, what she doesn't... Mer Meryl Streep thinks that we respect her. But in reality, we respect her when she's not being herself. Like the only times we really That's like true. Meryl Streep is when she's not being herself. We didn't fall in love with Meryl Streep. We fell in love with the character in a movie. 
And somewhere along the line, you know, years ago, Michael J. Fox was being interviewed and they said, uh, you know, uh, how do you handle the stress of your job? And he said, stress of my job? I get up every morning and go someplace and pretend to be somebody I'm not. It's a goof. It's like, what kind of stress is what? That's not work. <laughs> um, and I think that these some of these folks have lost their grip on that. Now, I, I wouldn't, you know, sort of tar the entire Hollywood community with the same brush because I know that there are a lot of hardworking actors out there, some of whom have conservative views, some of whom have liberal views, but who understand that their job is to entertain people and not to you know, make bold pronouncements about political ideas. And to those people who you'll never hear from, I tip my hat. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been around actors since I was 15. I've been around engineers since I was 13. They're very different kinds of people. Uh, <laughs> You'll notice that there's a particular difference between actors and most other professions. Actors are almost unique, and I'm obviously generalizing here, but as Scotty pointed out, what actors do is they become somebody else. And the very best actors are often the people with the least personality. My mother met Peter Sellers at a party, didn't know who he was. She said he was the most boring man I ever spoke to in my entire <laughs> life. This sense of not having their own identity is what makes actors often show up at Starbucks with glasses, reading glasses that don't have any prescriptions in them and carrying books by people whose names they can't even pronounce, let alone read. It's, it's an act that they play for themselves. It's a role that the actor plays for himself. It's the role that the actor has written for himself. So just very briefly, let's just examine the role that uh, Meryl Streep wrote for herself that evening, and that was applauded by so many of her fellow um, Hollywood actors. The role is, is that since somebody disagreed with them politically, America is now Nazi Germany. We're hmm. just heading into the worst of it. They're already starting to round up the foreigners hmm. because as she knows, we're gonna kick all of them out and there won't be anything left but football and mixed martial arts. So America's descending into a, a living hell comparable only to the Nazi regime because <laughs> the Republicans won an election and her pal Hillary Clinton lost. Therefore, since America's turning into this cesspit of evil that is flyover country, nothing but bigotry and racism and intolerance and all the rest, since America's turning into this nightmare world, who is going to stand up for the values of those people just before they're carted off to the trains that will take them to the execution camps and the crematoria? You may think I'm overplaying it, I'm not, I'm not. This kind of virtue signaling is what Meryl Streep actually believes. She actually believes yeah. that people who disagree with her politically are going to have everybody else in the country put in camps or exported or killed or whatever. That's what she believes. And she believes that by standing up there, she then becomes Schindler. She then becomes mm. somebody of that magnitude. She becomes the voice standing out. She becomes the heroine in her own play. And on some level, I think subconsciously, she knows and all the rest of them know that there is no risk involved in this whatsoever. That there were actors and musicians, all kinds of philosophers and doctors who spoke up against Nazi Germany and who spoke up against communist Russia, who simply taken out and disappeared. That's actual courage. What Meryl Streep showed was the kind of courage that playing a role will provide you. And if this is what they're gonna be doing for the next four years, then Turns out this is what they'll be doing for the next eight years. Sure is fun to watch in a creepy kind of way. And you don't have to buy a ticket. You don't. You don't. You get it for free. If, 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 you, if they knew that, they'd shut up. Uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, these uh, programs are brought to you by the members, the paying members of BillWhittle.com. We'd love to have you as part of the team to keep these messages going out to uh, everybody who's not paying for them. For Steve Green and Scott Ott and the rest of the uh, Right Angle team, I'm Bill Whittle. We'll see you next time.